Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to hold this up for the camera because this is what we're talking about. Reefer Madness with Brendan Hoyle. How you doing? Hey. But more importantly, I want to talk first. I want to talk about Double Dog. Yeah. First of all, where'd you come up with the name? Uh, Double Dog Theater. Well, we uh, we decided we wanted something that had some brain stickiness, that had something that had some character. We have two dogs, uh, and we like the idea. So you're sitting in the family room night. You're looking at your two dogs. And say, there it is. Tell you, it's hard to name a theater company. <laughs> That's uh, <laughs> when you sit around thinking about it. But I also. I like the idea that theater is a double of reality on stage, so I kind of like the idea of mirrors and doubling. And so, okay. Now, I don't want to be a father on you, but you know what? I think naming the company probably was the easiest thing that you will find going down the road. Uh, we'll see. Is that what <laughs> okay. Because brand new theater. Yep. Um, don't we have enough? I mean, we have Broadway on Chrysler. We have no. Little Theater. We have Generic Theater. Yeah, we have, we have a lot of theater in this town, but we don't have the kind of small professional theater company that I was looking to uh, create stuff with. So I explain it to me then. What, what do you mean by a small professional theater? Well, we wanted a company that could uh, be really nimble and agile, that only had a few staff members and would be able to create theater for audiences that were smaller, that weren't forced to do a huge amount of fundraising or to sell a million tickets, right. that could really hone in on a, a, like a 200 person audience per night and sell those tickets and do well. And we also wanted to do a, a different model for payment. We decided we wanted to create a profit share uh, company wherein instead of people making, you know, here's your salary, here's your salary, here's your stipend, or here's nothing, that everybody would profit equally on the success of a show. So whatever the show does, whatever we profit on, we share the profit among everybody involved, the actors, the production team, the, uh, the crew members, everybody who does stuff. So I should ask Billy and Noel to sell tickets at the end of the session. Yeah, they're, they're, they're very invested. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's kind of from the, from the performer's point of view, and this is really kind of a unique concept, isn't yeah. it, for Norfolk anyway? Absolutely. Well, we wanted, we wanted everybody associated to feel ownership over their product. Over the, uh, so you guys auditioned? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, when you auditioned, did you have any idea what this play was about? Um, I did. <laughs> she did. I kind of auditioned on a whim, so I hadn't done as much research. Much research. I knew from the title it was probably going to be about reefer. Yeah, but <laughs> I didn't know exactly what it was about. Okay, now what's your background? My background. Yeah. Um, I went to UVA. I graduated in 2013, and I've always studied classical music. Um, I sang in the Virginia Opera Chorus throughout the year. Um, so that's always been, I enjoy musical theater, I enjoy it a lot. So it's been a lot of fun. It's definitely been a step out of my box, what I'm used to. Okay, and the, and, the, and the idea, I mean, you're auditioning professionally too, outside this? Um, well, I mean, the Virginia Opera is a professional okay. company. So you hang with them, you hang with them a lot? <laughs> yeah, well, they cool. do um, shows from August to so April, that, May. And that keeps you busy. Yeah, for sure. So this is going to be a, right out there in front. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Noelle? What's your background then? Um, I went to the Governor's School for the Arts. I did the dance and musical theater departments there. And in the fall, I'm going to attend AMDA up in New York. It's the American Music and Dramatic Academy. And then you're going to try to stick to the professional yes. route too. Yes. Okay, so just to destroy your careers completely and forever <laughs> in front of the cameras, <laughs> is he any good? Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. He's, he's a Thanks lot for of your support. <laughs> <laughs> Brenda, because. I, uh, for full disclosure, I know Brendan on a personal level sure. too through our uh, through my daughter. But mm -hmm. but you've been doing some awesome cutting edge stuff with generic and that. So how yeah. does it feel to own this one? Though? It's great. Uh, it's really exciting. I mean, it's it's been a lot of fun to direct at various companies. I worked at Virginia Stage Company. I've directed at Generic, Little Theater of Norfolk, uh, uh, all around. Uh, and so it was really interesting to to kind of take ownership over the whole production. And it really feel like it's it's our show in a way that it's, it's never been able to do before. Because so. there's a kid that goes to Norfolk Collegian and saying, "Hey, I know him. Yeah, <laughs> he's doing yeah. reefer madness." <laughs> there you go. But 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 the community, the artist community. I mean, uh -huh. that's what you're providing now is an outlet for people to really hone their skills. Yeah. Well, we want to we we want to make stay Norfolk home. a real theater town. I mean, it's a it's got great theater here, yeah. but it could be even better. We can have actors and artists moving to this area because they want to pursue theatrical arts. That's just about doing more theater and doing it really well. Okay, so it's all about now butts and seats. It's yeah. great theater, it's great music, right? It's awesome, it's entertaining, but who's got the most to gain by getting tickets sold? Who wants to speak first? Well, I, I would say I think Norfolk has the most to gain by <laughs> tickets sold, but uh, yeah, tell, tell them about the show. <laughs> um, well, we were talking beforehand about why we chose Reefer Menace or why Brendan chose Reefer Menace, and I think it's an awesome idea just because it's so 
grabbing, if that makes any sense. Like, I had never seen anything like it, and I think that an audience could really benefit from how hilarious the show is and how out there it is and how they will genuinely have never seen anything like this in their nope. life. Because <laughs> you were not. telling me in, in pre-tape this originally was a movie done by a church group. Yeah, there was a church group in 1936 that made this anti-marijuana film that then became really popular uh, on the exploitation circuit. And then in the late 90s, they made this, uh, m this musical spoof version which now we have the privilege to do, and it's it's really wild. <laughs> and before your parents show up, you're following the script. Uh, yes, yeah. Just yeah. Like... We follow the script certainly, uh, but you know, let the, let the parents know what it's about before you bring your parents, oh, yeah. because it's. Uh, <laughs> it's are your crazy. kids going to see it? Uh, my kids are not going to see it. No. <laughs> okay. They, uh, there's some there's some bikini dancing and some. <laughs> Yeah, obviously some marijuana use. Not real. Not real. Simulated. Not real. Simulated. <laughs> and do not bring your reefer yeah. to the play, right? I would appreciate that. Thank you. I am just, <laughs> it is so cool that you're able to really put together the artist community for the sake of the art, but also providing good theater back to the community. Yeah, so I think you hit it on the head when you said Norfolk is to, is to gain by this. I'm looking forward to hearing about your success. <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, and I'm looking forward to coming. We'll, we'll welcome you in the audience. Okay, great. Okay, we'll now come back when we talk about the Dart Center, and they got some cool stuff going on there, too. Might include wine. Stay tuned.